Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have John and Holly Carney. They'll be talking about their new film on Fatima. We'll see a trailer for the movie and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guests are John and Holly Carney. They are part of Origin Entertainment. Holly's the executive producer for a film that's just coming out on Fatima. It's a beautifully dramatized version of the story of Fatima. It's got a real budget to it, looks great. So we want to promote it on EWTN, and tonight we're going to talk about the film. Yeah, there's a lot of different parts to this film, uh, not just a drama, but the, um, the acting, the just the interaction between the characters and them trying to communicate the supernatural. That's hard mm -hmm. to do, as you, mm -hmm. as you said in your interview, very hard yeah. to do. We're now going to go to a trailer for the film Fatima. If someone were to say to you why what happened all those years ago had to have happened to you, how would you respond? Because it was necessary. And do you have any regrets? I haven't done enough to please my mother. Which mother? Every time I read the name of one of our boys who lost his life, I have great admiration for them. They defend our progressive ideas that will free our country from religious superstitions. Ave Maria! Who are you? I come from heaven. Who are you talking to? What do you want from us? For the gift I can life, see her now. For the air we breathe. For the it is a sin to making lies up. It is true, Mama. She was as real as you are. Why would the mother of God choose you? What's so special about you? It could have been the devil. He often disguises himself. I've come for the seers. See what you've done? You deceived everyone. I have to go. I promised the lady I would go back. You were just a child, like a what harm can three little children possibly do? What is dangerous is what they represent. A huge crowd of people. We need to stop them. We came to see our children. No, I, don't I want my child is dead! Is going to end. All you need to say now is, I made everything up. I'm so sorry you couldn't see her. Faith begins at the edges of understanding. Welcome, John and Holly Carney, uh, to Life on the Rock. Thank you. Thank Hello, you. Father. And, uh, Holly, you're the executive producer for this new film, Fatima, coming out. And John, uh, your husband, has uh, been a support for you during the production of this great film. Uh, tell us a little about the film, when it's coming out, and uh, some of your hopes for it. Okay. Well, Fatima is going to be released August 28th in um, some theaters across the country, we're not sure which ones yet, and on PVOD, Premier Video On Demand. And we're super excited about this release because so many people have been on our social media, FatimaTheMovie.com, requesting that we release this movie now and in their homes. And we've really listened to the people. And so we're gonna go ahead and release without all the theaters being completely opened so people can watch it in, in the comfort of their home and feel safe and secure during this time. Right. Now this, this film's had some great endorsements. Tell us about that. 
Well, Fatima is um, such a, a beautiful project because we went about it to make sure it was endorsed by the Shrine of Fatima, the World Apostolate of Fatima, and even the Vatican has endorsed this movie. Right, and it's a, it's a real budget film. It's, it looks great. I mean, it, it's a quality film. I've seen a, a good part of it. And I, I was impressed, you know, just, um, you know, just the acting, the costume, the set, everything. You filmed it in Fatima, is that correct? We actually went to Portugal, and we are so blessed. This film stars Harvey Keitel, Sonia Braga, and we even have Andrea Bocelli singing the soundtrack. And he is a lover of Our Lady and, and the Lord, and he um, did an original just for our movie. So we're super excited about that. We have a great cast. The children were cast out of Spain. They are phenomenal. And I had the blessing of getting to know each one of them. They're just wonderful children. And we actually filmed in Portugal for, I think, about three months. And um, my producing partners and I were taking turns being on set for different portions of the filming. I was able to be there for the filming of The Miracle of the Sun. Right. And I, Super exciting. Yeah, I, I saw a scene of the early, one of the early apparitions, and I, I love the way they did Our Lady. It, you know, it's an impossible, impossible task to try to put this on film. But I love the way they did it, and I, I think you all captured her, her maternal tenderness and beauty and things, and um, it was compelling. It really was compelling. So, Thank you. And you know, one of the things that I love about Fatima, many people will say to John and to me, oh, are you guys a Christian company? Well, we're actually a secular company. We do have a Christian division, but Fatima is actually funneled out of our secular division because it's a true story. It's a supernatural phenomenon that really did happen in 1917, 102 years ago. And the miracle, after her appearance to these shepherd children for six months, her um, the miracle of the sun, which was the sixth and last appearance to everyone, when she performed that miracle, it was witnessed by over 70,000 people. It was witnessed by a tremendous amount of people, everyone. It was documented. Newspapers were there, news reporters, pictures were taken. And so for me, this is so riveting. It's it's not just for the Christians or Catholics or, or people of faith. This is a movie for everyone right. because it really did happen. Right. Yeah. And I love part of your story is that you've started Origin Entertainment. Um, you wanted, you you have two adult children yourself and you want you're trying to transform the culture, right? Hollywood's obviously a mess in so many ways. And you want to put, you know, values, right? Real family values out there. Maybe, John, you could speak to this a little bit as the father of the family, wanting something better for your kids. Was that a big motivation? Uh, absolutely. I actually have three children, and two of them are in the industry, and they have gone uh, numerous times up to Hollywood uh, for auditions. And, and we were really shocked at some of the readings that, that they were going through and, and, and the intent of some of these movies. And, and we felt as parents, if, we're gonna, if our children are going to be involved in this industry, we need to have some type of response to, uh, to, to uh, create or have an influence uh, in the Hollywood industry of something positive, uh, something family friendly, um, something clean, uh, something holy possibly. So. Um, that's where we got involved in Origin Entertainment. Uh, we ran into Jamie Volk, who was the president, and uh, that's their goal. That's their mission. Uh, family friendly, transformative entertainment. You walk out of the theater knowing that something very positive, something very uh, kind, something very uh, optimistic you've just witnessed, you've just experienced, and you walk away feeling good about yourself in the world. All right. I think that's part of the. I think that's. My belief is that, like, uh, to be an American Catholic, I think that's part of our, our charism, is that, you know, we have this, this culture that loves startups and, you know, people that are interrupters even, you know, and, and can get out there and do something. And I, I think it's a great witness to the role of the laity that, you know, your sanctification is not, you know, running from the world, cowering in fear, but to go into that and to be light and leaven with a good baptized American spirit, you know, <laughs> and maybe your foot, maybe your football background helped you. You are a 
a New Orleans Saints uh, place kicker, right? And, and so you're not uh, yes. one to shy away from a fight. True, I was very blessed to play in the NFL uh, for the Chargers, uh, San Diego Chargers, and the Saints and the Giants and a few other teams. And uh, certainly um, uh, courage and faith play a big role uh, in, in the job, the, the, the career of a professional athlete, and certainly for place kickers in particular. Um, the majority of the kickers that I am friends with, that I played with, peers of mine throughout my career, uh, had a very strong faith base. Yeah, yeah, that is our, that's our rock. And, and we need that, of course, we always need faith, but you know, right now we're in this middle of a pandemic. And as you point out, you know, the time of Fatima, there are the apparitions, there was the Spanish flu going around. So the message of Fatima is a call to faith, repentance. Um, and you know, Portugal suffered so much, right? During the war, the communists, the anti-clericalism and things. And Our Lady comes to call us to a stronger faith. Is that, do you see that as an important message today? That is such a beautiful message. And I, I want to say something about these three children, um, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. When they were dealing with the political climate of that time during the period of the apparitions, this was not easy. They were, um, Lucia was actually beaten by her mother with a broom, forced to recant. These three children were taken in by the government and questioned. They're actually living martyrs because each one of them said, if you don't recant, you will be boiled in oil. And they took each child out and they're like, oh, we're gonna go to heaven now. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're, they're not recanting. And they're really living martyrs. They're, they're, they were steadfast in their faith. And when the Blessed Mother had shown them heaven and hell, their faith life changed so drastically. It was that transition that they were faithful for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, it's very difficult in this society today because of the media, social media, what's out there, everything's permissible. You know, um, good is called bad and bad is called good. I wanna talk about our children just for a second. Our older son is out of college, Luke. He's uh, 28 and we have two that are in college in this climate of everything's permissible and um, no accountability. And JD is a senior. He's actually, no offense, a quarterback, not a kicker <laughs> at Notre Dame. And our daughters. Why would I be offended? <laughs> He's smarter than dad. <laughs> <laughs> and our daughter Kiki is going into her junior year at Notre Dame. They're not just film majors. They're also my son's a double major, JD in theology, and Kiki's minoring in theology. They really want to weave God into every aspect of their lives. JD and Kiki and Luke and their friends actually give our social circle and community hope that not all kids are walking down the road of darkness. There are many kids um, that go to uh, confession every week, that go to the Holy Mass, not just on Sundays, that have Bible studies, and our kids are living testaments to that and their friends. And like the three children, uh, the shepherd children in Fatima 100 years ago, they were examples and role models to you know, you, we too are called to holiness. You do not have to have a vocation to be a nun or a priest to be called to holiness. I know many people have asked JD, our senior at Notre Dame, are you going to be a priest? He said, no, everyone should be holy like I am holy. And I think that um, it's really important right now to provide um, feature films such as this to give people the opportunity to see steadfast faith and yeah. to see commitment, and to see uh, devotion to our sacramental graces. Yeah, I think it, it is, yeah, the arts, you know, the gospel definitely, you know, needs the arts to, to you know, to, to be a force to proclaim that gospel truth. And it is so striking, you know, to see that up there in film, and, and to just be reminded, yeah, this was real, you know, Our Lady really appeared. Our Lady really asked for the rosary, and I, I know like, the rosary is so key to the message of Fatima. It's paid a part in your life. You were telling me earlier how you regularly pr pray the rosary and it's been a blessing for your family. We, we really do. It has been the neat, <laughs> it is such a blessing. In fact, <laughs> it's such a blessing. We have um, 
uh, an aunt and uncle that have really been our spiritual role models. And they pray the rosary every day too. And it's something I think a lot of families do in spurts, but our family has made a commitment and we've been super faithful about this to pray the rosary every day. And we've been very consistent uh, since last year, December 6th. And one of the beautiful things that the Blessed Mother says to the children and the children repeat to all the people listening, pray the rosary every day. It's such a form of spiritual warfare. And there are so many miracles. Every time we pray the rosary, it's just like, oh, I know that the Lord's uh, anointing and blessing is with us because what is the rosary but really meditating on the life of Christ, right. you know, in every decade, yeah. What would you say to someone, maybe a filmmaker out there who says, well, you can't produce a religious movie today. It's just too hard. What would you tell them? Well, I think Mel Gibson proved them wrong. I think that was that was the case. That was the belief prior to the passion and um, the popularity of that film, the response of that film, and still during Easter when that plays on TV, uh, the viewership is amazing. Uh, so he changed that in in the movies we had mentioned earlier. Um, God's not dead, and a number of those movies have had impact, mm -hmm. and I think it's growing. And I think. Uh, because of that response, filmmakers, directors, writers are feeling, you know, there is a market out there for it, and it's a hungry market. We want more. The, the people really do want these films. And, and let me add on to that. Sometimes Christian films can speak Christianese and can be preachy. We realize that. Our business model is a little bit different, that um, we want to give the message and let the message be in there for everyone to receive but not in a preachy way or not any kind of film that's just for Christians. We want it kind of woven in there um, in, in a spirit of, of goodness. I, I think that it is possible to make fabulous uh, Christian films, family-friendly films, because that's what the people really want. You know, whenever there's any kind of G, PG, or PG-13, those movies are sold out. There just simply aren't enough of them. And, and those subjects of, you know, the family and religious themes, those are the most powerful topics, the, you know, plots, um, battle of good and evil. I mean, that's real. And that's, I, I think Christian films, we should have the best content. We really do. <laughs> I mean, you watch a modern film, sometimes it's so relativistic with its values. You're not sure who's good, who's evil, you know, and it's like, it's not inspiring, you know. And, the Christian film it can be inspiring, you know, showing some of these fundamental values we're supposed to be about. So I uh, just, Thanks. yeah, keep up the good work. And, um, and maybe you could tell us one more time how someone could watch this film and when it's coming out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fatima will be released on August 28th. It'll be released at theaters that will be open at that time, and it'll be released on PVOD, Premier Video On Demand. All right. Well, thank you for coming on uh, Life on the Rock, and keep up the good work. We hope to see a lot, a lot more films from you all. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Well, this is our Into the Vineyard Challenge segment, and we want to challenge you tonight to pray the rosary. Yeah. Certainly that's at the heart of the message that's of it. Fatima. So. <laughs> Simple. Simple. You know, pray the rosary. I think uh, one of the things that we've tried to do uh, during this time since uh, the pandemic uh, in March was to pray the rosary every single day after the Mass and to welcome you, our viewers, into that. So if you're not praying the rosary uh, with us, we invite you to pray with us in mm -hmm. the mornings. And that is, that is so powerful. I love praying that live rosary after Mass because I, I just feel like we're gathered with so many people praying the rosary together. And it is, it is such a powerful prayer for peace, certainly during the time of the pandemic here, you know, to end that, to help people that are sick. You know, we're uniting people together and to pray. And what's more powerful than that? That's the most powerful force in the world. And, you know, we could always pray the rosary better, greater devotion, greater attention, uh, maybe more frequent, uh, more mysteries. And that's, a, that's a essential to the call of Fatima, you know, mm -hmm. is to pray, to offer sacrifice. You know, we need that. And as we pointed out in the discussion about those kids suffered for their witness. Yes. You know, they did not have a cakewalk. No. And 
Uh, they suffer from the, their family, from the church authorities. Mm -hmm. They were rejected. Um, I like in the movie, and, and uh, you know, this was brought out in the interview, was um, just the reality of hell. Yeah, yeah. And that changed everything for them. When they saw mm -hmm. hell, that experience of hell, like, this is real. And I, I better get my life together, and I better pray. These are children. Right. These are not 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds. These are 10-year-old, mm -hmm. 7-year-old children right. you know, that experienced and saw yeah. the vision of hell. Yeah. And, and Portugal you know, was going through such sufferings during that time you know, with World War I and uh, you know, the difficulty of life, the anti-clericalism, the, hmm. the oppression of the church during that time. So they knew struggle, they knew difficulties, and that, that nation, the whole nation, I think, is a witness to faith during that period. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I remember one time going to the, to the monastery where Sister Lucia was at, and she was a Carmelite in Coimbra, and you know, that was an austere place. Now, it just hit me, like, if you want to do penance in this life, <laughs> you go to that monastery and be a contemplative nun and pray. I mean, she was an embodiment of a yeah. message. So, you know, we hope we can all live that message of Fatima, you know, to turn from sin, to do penance, to pray, you know, to trust Our Lady's intercession. Those are things we all need today. So we'll send you to that vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Padrecito, it's going down. Already, don't call me comeback. We back like we never left. Ave Maria, let's go. Hail Mary, come with me and the brothers crossing borders in the penitentiaries. I blew in the black with a badge and some slacks. It don't matter what you look like. God has you back from the Genesis. Pinpoint the nemesis. Pinned to the ground by a Jewish girl in Bethlehem. It's not irrelevant. People, the Messiah wrote. Reverence the God, man. Why you hoping high and rose? I'm 9 to 5 and it defining rhymes for retirement. But I admit my iron mind is finally that define what the lies of men have found within peace. I call her Mother Mary and she finds me when I'm down and sick. Oh my, Leah, like an honor, man, I be a joyful noise written. I'm spitting till the day I see her. No king, queen, I see her. Can't get better with creatures selected in perfect. To birth the savior and teacher, mama, we need ya. This world's gone mad. They still killing babies, still abusing the badge, still thinking that one life matters more than the last. Hiding behind these ignorant comments and hashtags. We pass that. We look for your visions and apparitions because they show us you've always listened. We know you keep these things close in your heart. And I see me, Madonna, cause we don't know where to start. Oh, Mama Mia, Maria, you carry God in you. Always devoted, immaculate, this the Leah. Anointed senorita with more soul than Adidas. You mother, the soul healer, the son of the soul leader. The one who's sitting high in the stone like nose bleeders. Only one to ride with me like we in a two-seater. We owe you the utmost, the most just won't see you. Even though you're so close to the most, we still reach you. Your will is God's will, that's something they don't teach you. Apparitions at different lands with no visa. Always putting in work and I know that we all need Throw stones in the old before I see ya. Dallas think you're trying to catch an interception. With all of these Hail Marys we keep tossing. What the keep fumbling is that he chose you. Particularly to carry out the winning touchdown. Point toss for my soul. Here it goes. It'll always be the head that'll win the Joe. But I feel Satan would attack with a stunning blitz. That's when you're coming for the save. Michael Vick. I pray to serve you as you deserve with all of me. All I am taking me to the Super Bowl promised land. And I lie to you that I'm at your command Even if these haters don't care to understand You're the spouse of the spirit The daughter of the father The mother of the son You do the highest honor Mother of the king That makes the queen of heaven Perpetual virgin Immaculate conception Assumed into heaven at the moment of your death The Bible says that all generations call you blessed And blessed is the fruit of thy womb The one that caused your death for three days in the tomb Pray for us now and at the hour of our death So we can see the pretty gates when we laid the rest Blessed Mother Mary Let me proclaim my love for you Just like your only son Jesus Christ wants me to Maria, Maria Virgo prudentissima Ora pro nobis Mate clementissima En nomine Padre E fili Espiritu Santi Tota Toca es Maria Long before you blessed Yeah, he was on the guest list Eve couldn't touch this Father going to wreck this He was on a death list You were rest the rest of this Joe Kim and Anne were blessed For the rest of us Abortion on demand we talk about the man, BLM, Planned Parenthood, got a plan, don't worry about the
plan. Don't worry about the damn. Go to your mama. It's all about the family.